time to bring you up to speed on everything that's been going on down here at the shop. The uh, last time I was in here, I put penetrating epoxy on all of my teak and on the bowsprit and left. I had no idea what it was going to turn out like. So here's the result. The um, smaller pieces, you can see the uh, pen penetrating epoxy has um, darkened the teak up to a, a fairly dark color. Um, it seems to have soaked into the wood uh, fairly well, except for in places where I dumped a load of it on, like this piece here. I don't know if you can see the shine on that, but the, the grain was really, really open and really, really rough. This is where the boomkin um, beam passes over top, and I don't know whether weather or just what, but um, it was rough, so I put lots on there, and it's gone quite shiny, which I'm kind of indifferent to. I'm going to put uh, epoxy, thickened epoxy, on it later. Um, I'm going to sand this down and put epoxy on it, and then put it back on the boat. Here's another piece. It's a, the uh, port and starboard side. You can see the little dent there. That's where the boom keen beam went across, and it too had uh, opened up the, the grain on the teak. But other than that, it looks great. Looks absolutely marvelous. And the uh, the cap rails. They, uh, they feel rough. They feel like they need to be sanded again and then um, finished. Uh, they wouldn't look good if I just put them back on like that. So I'll probably treat them to a coat of epoxy at some point. But same thing. The, the uh, epoxy seems to have soaked into the wood, uh, stuck to everything. And, uh, and it looks not bad. I mean, I didn't put it on there to make it look good. I made, put it on there to seal the wood. I'll probably do the back side because the uh, water will get underneath the cap rails and it'll stay wet. So rather than have it just sitting there getting wet, I will uh, seal it and uh, prevent that. That's probably a job for another day, though. It takes quite a while to paint all these up. There isn't a lot of room here in the sh Well, there's lots of room here in the shop, but um, we've got people putting crap everywhere. So I confine my activities to my little workspace right here. So I'm pleased with that. Looks an awful lot better than it did. And all of the, uh, the cracks and what have you have been... Uh, fixed up. So in the last installment, I uh, showed you my Groco seacocks and flanges. I was concerned that uh, they didn't turn all the way in and seat properly. So I actually wrote to Groco and they responded and they said that this is um, pipe thread, tapered pipe thread, and it's designed to turn in about three or four turns by hand and then get tight. Uh, and I was concerned because it's brass with a, with a wrench this size, uh, you can apply an awful lot of torque on these. And I said, well, how much, how much torque can they take? And the guy said, you can cut, they can take a lot. So um, they're not designed for the um, flange to seat up inside um, or on the shoulder here, which is kind of a puzzle to me. I don't know why they wouldn't be, um, but that's just the way it is. So I'll have to take that as it is and install them that way. And then you may remember these guys, these are my through holes. Uh, they were in fairly rough shape. And I had a friend of mine who works in a metal workshop shop peen them. And so they're not, they're not shiny, but they're clean and they fit. So for all of my through hole fittings, I now have the hardware that I need to complete the job. I have to make backing plates for the flanges to sit on. Unbolt the old ones, bolt in the new ones. We're pretty much ready to paint below the waterline and things are coming together very, very quickly. So that's that. Thanks for coming along for the ride. And as always, fair winds, following seas. God bless.